The 2024 European International Championships has just wrapped up and Niles Dunlop has gone on to win the biggest international championship of all time. And I believe this is one of the biggest VGC events of all time, having around 975 players being just short of that illustrious 1,000 players. Now, unfortunately, Victory Road here, as you guys can see, has not actually updated their site. So we will have to jump over to Top Cut Explorer to take a look at some of these teams here. But as we can see, Niles Dunlop, Nils Dunlop, I I'm not exactly sure how it's pronounced, I do apologize, has gone on to win with this really, really cool team here, right? So as we see here, the Cocaine Bear, as he was once called, Blood, sorry, not Blood Moon, regular Ursaluna, has gone on to win the European International Championships. This is incredibly cool to see, in my opinion, because this is a metagame that I think everyone was kind of saying, you know, or looking at it saying like, hey, it's like a super figured out metagame, right? You know, we've seen Japanese balancing incredibly good recently, you know, these... You know, essentially what you're looking at like the Incin, the Rilla Boom, the Raging Bolt, right? Kind of just dominating the format, right? Then you look at this team. Yeah, sure, you know, Incin's here, he's still doing what he does best, but like on this team, you know, Niles opted for the Amoongus, which by the way, I think is incredibly good. Amoongus is one of the best answers into Raging Bolt because it's a Pokemon that can, you know, it can take those, you know, those Dragon Pulses. It can also redirect away the Thunderclaps um, and also just threaten Spore, which I do think is very, very important, right? But we also just see some other really, really cool techs here. So, um, I'll quickly start off with the first Pokemon here, which is just Urshifu um, Rapid Strike. This is like the stock standard Urshifu Rapid. Nothing really important to say here. It's just a terrible water choice Garth. One of the best Pokemon in the format. Um, you know, I was saying for a hot minute, like when everyone was playing Dark Urshi, I'm like, yeah, just watch Rapid Strike uh, re-rise, boys. Like everyone's like, oh, single strike, you know, let's start going on Terra Fairy on everything. Second, you start going on Terra Fairy on everything, Urshifu uh, Rapid Strike just starts running through with uh, Terra Water Surging Strikes, which is very, very cool. But then we see P2. So... P2 is a Pokemon that has definitely been peaking up in usage recently, or at least it's, it's getting some more results. I think people were really starting to like kind of figure out how good this Pokemon could be. And I do think this set here with Terra Flying was an incredibly cool adaptation. So essentially for anyone who doesn't know um, how download works with Terra Blast, right? So obviously normally Porygon 2 is a special attacking Pokemon. I think most of us should know that at this point. Um, and the way it works is, you know, if your special attack stat is higher than your physical attack stat, your Terra Blast will be special. Uh, and obviously if, it's, if, you know, if your attack stat is higher, it will be physical. Now, the way it works with Porygon 2 is really interesting because you get a download boost, right? Now, download boost is dependent on your opposing, uh, the opposing Pokemon's, you know, defense stats, you know, whether or not you'll get a special attack boost or a physical attack boost, right? And the really cool thing about P2 is you can play this as like a, you know, in this case, a Terra Flying Terra Blast, and, it, you know, it could just be a physical attack. There's just some situations where having that physical Terra Blast is just better. Big, a big example of it, obviously, is uh, Fluttermane, right? Fluttermane had a really good special attack stat. Um, and yeah, with the, like a physical Terra Flying Terra Blast, you can just like, you know, hit it on the physical end, deal massive damage because you'll get that plus one to your physical attack. And it is just very, very cool. Um, but yeah, Terra Flying is also really, really nice when paired up with Ursa Luna. Not to mention Porygon 2 is just one of the best Trick Room setters in the game, right? It's incredible bulk with the Violet item is insane, has access to recover. Um, Ice Beam is obviously incredibly good into things like Raging Bolt and Landorus Incarnate, which are both very, very popular at the minute. And Terra Blast is just a fantastic stab move that also, you know, works really well with Terra, right? Uh, you know, the Cocaine Bear, Ursaluna, we spoke about it before, but Facade, Headlong Rush, Earthquake, you know, with the Guts, Flame Orb, this mod is honestly just nutty. It deals so much damage. It was really cool to see it win as well, because I do think Ursaluna as a Pokemon will continue to see going into Regulation G with the Restricted Pokemon. Um, you know, definitely has the damage output to really go with some of the biggest, baddest Pokemon in the format. Um, and it's very bulky and also really slow. So, you know, seeing it do well here, um, I think it will continue onto the future formats. The Amoongus here with Terra Ghost, I thought was like super, super interesting. Um, I think it's, it is really good to obviously dodge fake outs. Um, and yeah, I mean, just Spore, Rage Powder, obviously the stock standard. Sludge Bomb, I do think is, you know, probably the move of choice right now. I think just like threatening, you know, threatening super effective damage one into all of the Terra Poisons is like really, really good. But also too, just trying to get a Spore onto things like Incineroar, right? Like if you can catch an Incineroar on a Switch, you know, that has like safety goggles, um, all of a sudden, like, you know, maybe you do 20% to it, but you poison them, right? And the next thing you know, it's like, oh, you're really going to fake out and pivot out. And then you just kind of like, you're going to fake out cycle. But every time, you know, you pivot in, you're taking a lot of damage. Um, I do think it is really, really good. And of course, Rocky Helmet, I think one of the best items right now. As the single strike, sorry, as Rapid Strike continues to rise up, um, it's definitely one of the best switch-ins to it. And having Rocky Helmet deal 50% obviously is incredibly good. Um, the Incineroar here, now this was a super interesting Incineroar. I don't know if anyone caught the, the Grand Finals, but I think it was in game two, if my memory serves correct. Um, where there was just like one turn where like the Incin and um, Rillaboom were both on the field with each other at the same time. And he just insta-locked in Flare Blitz, like didn't even consider going for the fake out, I'm pretty sure. Um, and he just straight up outsped the Rillaboom and one tapped it with Flare Blitz. And I think um, one of the homies was saying that, I think Scott, is it Scott? I'm going to I'm gonna butcher his last name, Yamafuji, Yamafuji, something like that. I, I apologize. One of the P2 players, um, I believe he had it at the last um, a big event. Uh, he was running like this really fast Incineroar, like 107 speed. 
um, or something like that, 108. And that basically outspeeds the Rillabooms that don't put any investment in, right? Um, I think like four speed Rillaboom hits like 106. Um, so because of that, I'm assuming at some point he realized his Incineroar was faster. He just locked it in and just one tapped the, the Rillaboom in game two, which I thought was like super sick. Um, Terra Grass obviously is also really, really nice, especially into opposing Amoongus's. Um, and yeah, I do think it's just overall just a really good Terra as well, right? You know, it's really good into some of the ground weaknesses, which I do think is one of the toughest things for Incineroar to, um, you know, match up into right now. I have said for a little while, I think Shukaberry Incineroar is very, very good, just so you don't automatically lose the game to um, the Landorus Incarnate. But of course, as well, you can also build to be a bit bulkier um, and just straight up, you know, knock off their life orbs, which I do think is very, very nice. Uh, and then finally, the booster Fluttermane here. Now, off memory, this was a special attack boosting Fluttermane. Uh, and as you can see here, it has a substitute. Now, I think Moonblast Shadow Ball is just fantastic. I, I do feel like we're at a stage in the metagame where Speed Booster honestly feels really bad. Um, I'm someone who's ran Speed Booster literally since Worlds last year. I've been a huge fan of it. Even when it wasn't popular, I was a massive fan of it. Um, and I'm at a stage now where I'm kind of not on the Speed Booster train anymore. I feel like Fluttermane feels like it does no damage. And even if you got like Speed Booster with Dazzling Gleam, there are some times where like, yeah, sure, you'll do like 20% to both mons, but then you just get like one shot by like a Rillaboom and it just feels bad. Um, and because of that, I do really like this adaptation here. Going like the Special Attack Booster with Terra Fairy, saying, hey, like, I'm never going to click Dazzling Gleam. It doesn't do much damage. You know, you've got the sub there because... Again, sub's like really, really good, right? You go up against like the Amoonguses, right? And you just like fake out one of their partners with like, you know, Incin, and then you just like sub up or again, use the Amoongus, like redirect plus sub. I do think it's like really, really good. Um, but yeah, really cool adaptation here with the substitute. And honestly, just like a really sick team. Like this this core here, this is your Fire Water Grass core, boys. You know, Amoongus, Incin, Urshifu, just like really, really good, right? Oh, that's the wrong one. So we'll go back here. We'll look at Tim Edwards because Tim obviously also played incredibly well throughout this event. And as we see here, Tim was also running that, you know, that Japanese balance, you know, as they call it. Um, one of the big changes though with Tim's team, um, which I thought was super interesting, is no Landorus Incarnate on this team, which is obviously like fine. Um, I just look at this team and I think like it really struggles with Landorus Incarnate, right? Because again, you're running the Focus Sash Oshifu, which means chances are you're probably adamant. Um, now, I wouldn't be surprised if it was Jolly just to, you know, help out in that matchup. Um, but he obviously did obviously um, opt to run the, the Speed Booster Fluttermane as well, as you can see here with Taunt, uh, no Shadow Ball, which again, I do think is the play. Um, it's something I have been testing a lot heading into Perth myself, right? Um, but look, this team, it's pretty standard, right? You've got that Raging Bolt with the lefties, you know, Terra Fairy to obviously help out into the mirror matchup. Come on, Deep Pulse and, um, and Thunderclap, right? Very, very solid. Again, Rillaboom here, very stock standard. This is the Woodhammer Glide U-Turn Fake Out, you know, Assault Vex Terra Fire, very, very standard. Um, Ergopon Hurthlim here, opting to run no redirection here in, um, you know, and, and to have the Stoppy Tantrum, which I do think is very, very good. Having Stoppy Tantrum to hit in general, I do think is like super, super important. Um, Incineroar here opting to go no um, Flare Blitz and opting for the Will-O-Wisp, which I do think is really good. Um, I think Will-O-Wisp is like fantastic right now, and I definitely think dropping one of your offensive moves for it is a very good idea. Um, personally, I'm not a massive fan of dropping knockoff. Um, I get there are definitely certain matchups like P2s, for example, where you probably do want the knockoff, but realistically, Flare Blitz is your way of taking on things like Amoongus. And if you don't have your Ogre Pawn on the board or, you know, it's a hard game for Ogre Pawn, it really feels like this team can't deal with Amoongus's. Um, and that's kind of what we saw in the finals where like, you know, the Amoongus coming out of Nile's team really just kind of put in work. Um, the Rapid Strike with uh, Focus Sash. I'm a huge fan of Focus Sash on both the Yoshi Fu forms. I think it's really good. Just giving these really squishy mons the chance to always get enough attack, I think is just fantastic. Um, and then finally, the Flutter main. Um, You know, we kind of touched on, you know, this team having an Amoongus problem, right? Because obviously no Terra Grass here on the, the Incian. Um, obviously, you know, safety goggles, so really your best answers into it are your two grass types. Uh, and sometimes the grass types can really get overwhelmed by things like Incineroar, which is a, a big reason why I think Stomping Tantrum was used. Because again, like this team, you don't have much into Incineroar, right? Like, yeah, Raging Bolt can do a bit of damage, but Raging Bolt really doesn't want to get like fake out parting shot it on. Um, especially too, again, by Nile's team, which was like really fast Incineroar, right? Like you, you're probably outspeeding those Raging Bolts and getting off the um the parting shots before they can ever get the deep pulse off. Um, but yeah, because of that, like having the taunt here, I think was like really, really good to even, you know, help with the Moonguses. Um, But yeah, obviously like, I think that was one of the team's biggest issues, right? Like if you go watch the finals, like Niles put in a lot of work against it. But regardless, the team still, like, still does have outs and it is still very, very good. Um, and yeah, congratulations to Tim for, you know, getting uh, second place at Europe. So continuing on here, we'll take a look at some of the top four teams. Um, I'm not even going to try to pronounce this name. I do apologize. I'm fuck it. It's jo Georgian. Yeah, yeah, look, I'm sorry. I my I can't read that. My apologies. Uh, but this was sick because this is a core, again, your boy's actually been looking at this. This is the Roaring Moon in Sin Golden Go core, right? I think these three paired up with the Amoongus is like super duper good right now, right? Um, I've, I've always said like literally since Regulation, what was it, B, um, when the Paradox ones were introduced, Golden Go plus Roaring Moon is such a good combo. It covers each other super duper well. It's just fantastic, right? 
Roaring Moon paired up with Amoongus is also incredibly good, right? Amoongus can, you know, obviously help out with, you know, the fairy types, you know, you can protect the Roaring Moon, while Amoongus can, like, tank a Dazzling Gleam, whatever, click the Spore, it's fantastic there, right? Uh, again, Roaring Moon hates, you know, hates the fairy types. Golden Girl, he's like, hey, baby, I got that, you know, choice specs, make it rain, you know, I'm I'm one-shotting those Flutter Mains, man, I don't care. And again, even, like, Golden Girl paired up with Amoongus, like, really, really good. Um, they also both pair incredibly well with Incineroar. Um, obviously, these two here are fantastic, you know, defensive backbone. Uh, but not to mention, Incineroar is just a fantastic switch in for Golden Girl, right? To help, you know, take some of those dark type moves, some of those fire type moves. It is just really, really good. Um, obviously, the team, you know, those two in particular, sorry, have a bit of a ground weakness. But that's where things like Landorus Incarnate and the Roaring Moon with the booster um, energy plus Terra Flying come into play. Um, yeah, I I'm a huge fan of this team. Uh, really interesting to see, like, P2 on a Roaring Moon team. Uh, but obviously, it does give the team a second mode where I wouldn't be surprised if this Golden Girl is pretty slow, like, probably around that 112 mark. That way, you can play, you know, Play, like, still in Trick Room, but, um, you know, outspeed, you know, some of the slower ones in the format. Uh, and not to mention, I do think, you know, Terra Fairy plus Trick is just really, really good right now. If you can catch something like an Incine or a Rillaboom with the Choice Specs, um, it makes the game so much easier, man. Like, if you can just trick those guys and you're like, even if you steal, like, the Assault Vest off, like, a Rillaboom, like, yeah, sure, you know, obviously you can't click Trick yourself, but you still got some pretty pow powerful moves here that you can click. Um, and you kind of just cripple their game, which I do think is, like, super good. Um, and of course, Lander's Card, one of the best ones in the format, um, one of the best answers into something like the uh, the Raging Bolt. And again, seeing these three here, um, I'm really not shocked. These are three of the best Pokemon into Raging Bolt right now. Um, obviously, Amoongus, you know, it, it can redirect, right? It can be really annoying, put stuff to sleep. Incin Fake Out, you know, we've already spoken about it. Fake Out, Knock Off, Parting Shot, very, very good. Uh, and of course, Lander's Card, um, you know, it, it's a Pokemon that just says, hey, even at plus one, I'm still dealing like 80% to you, man. I'll uh, be yeah, a really cool team here by um, George and... Georgian Rage and Makers. I apologize for butchering your name, sir. Uh, but then we have Alex Gomez, obviously one of the best players in the world. Everyone knows Alex Gomez, I think, at this point. Uh, another really, really cool team. Um, obviously, we have the pretty stock standard team here. This is just the Firewater Grass Core that everyone loves. Pair that up with the Raging Bolt, and you got yourself some Japanese balance boys. Um, and then we see a bit of Chen Pao plus Golden Joe. Now, we'll go through the sets at the start here. Obviously, very, very standard um, Rillaboom set here. Not much to say. It's, you know, we've kind of seen this on like every team. Uh, we see another, you know, uh, Incine here that dropped one of its offensive coverage moves for the will -Wisp. In this, you know, case here, he dropped the knockoff. Uh, but this is the Terra Ghost plus Sugar. Now, Terra Ghost is really good because, like, one, you're immune to opposing fake out. And two, you're also, um, you know, it gives you immunity to the fighting types, which are some of this Pokemon's biggest issues. And, of course, we see that Sugar Berry that I was touching on before. Very good into the Lenders Incarnate. Then we have the Urshifu Rapid Strike, Terrifier with Mystic Water. Now, this one to me was super interesting because I feel like a lot of the time when you run something like um, like, surge, like Single Strike, sorry, Rapid Strike with Mystic Water, you normally pair it up with some form of speed control. Now, obviously, this team has a lot of support in things like Rillaboom and Incineroar, kind of helping you get those attacks off. Um, but Defensive Terrifier as well, obviously, is really, really good. But yeah, seeing this without any, you know, form of speed control or a, a Scarf is like really interesting to me because... Obviously, Urshi Rapid plus Chen Pao was one of the best, you know, combos in the game in terms of like, hey, I've got this Chen Pao with Sword of Ruin. And then Terra Water, you know, Scarf Urshi just puts in like massive, massive work, right? So to see like a Terra Fire Mystic Water set on a Chen Pao team, I did think was like super interesting. Um, very standard Raging Bolt set. I don't really need to go over that. Um, but this Chen Pao set here is incredibly interesting, right? We see Clear Amulet, which I do think is very, very good on the Pokemon. Uh, but then we just see like the normal like four moves with Terra Fire. Um, again, a really interesting defensive Terra here, especially because there's no Focus Sash on this Pokemon. As a matter of fact, there's no Focus Sash on this team, which I did think was like super, super interesting. Uh, but obviously Chen Pao paired up with, you know, all these strong physical physical attackers is still very, very good. Uh, but the final one here, I've also just realized, I just said this Raging Bot was the stock standard one. I lied. This is our uh, booster energy because the leftovers is on the Golden Joe, man. Uh, but yeah, look, Golden Joe has been, uh, you know, he was the, the, the Raging Bolt before Raging Bolt. He was the guy where you pair him up next to Rillaboom and, you know, you go for the, the fake out and you get the grassy terrain plus the lefties. You get a nasty plot up to protect and bang, you just got back 24% of your HP and all you did was, you know, set up and protect, right? Uh, and of course, you can pivot around with the Incin plus Rillaboom uh, and you can pin things, obviously, with, you know, potential Urshifu Rapid Strike. Uh, but yeah, Golden Joe, incredibly good into the metagame right now. Um, You know, I'm actually surprised we haven't seen it more as, um, as Regulation F has developed. Uh, but then moving on to the top eight here, we have Luca. Um, again, look, another pretty standard team here. Did opt for the, um, the Terra Fairy Assault Vest Raging Bolt here. Um, I do think this set is actually pretty good on Raging Bolt. I'm kind of shocked, honestly, to not see Snarl, because Snarl obviously does help out into the mirror quite a bit. Uh, but obviously, you know, if you can bait out the Terra Fairy on the opposing Raging Bolt and just start clicking, uh, Thunderbolts, I do think it's pretty nice. Especially because this version of Raging Bolt can opt for a little bit more speed than a normal calm mindset. Uh, but we do see here another Urshifu Rapid Strike, uh, sorry, Rapid Strike, yes, with, um, the Focus Sash, very, very good. 
Um, we see another Incineroar here dropping the Flare Blitz for the Willow Wisp. Um, keep that in mind, guys. I definitely think you drop one of them for Willow. It's super duper good into the current meta game. We do see the uh, the safety goggles though, which I do think is very very good. Um, a pretty standard Amuga set here. Citrus Berry plus um, Terra Water. Citrus obviously is incredibly good, but I am a huge fan of Rocky Helmet right now. Uh, we see another you know Speed Booster Icy Wind Taunt set here on the Flutter Main. Um, I agree with this, guys. As I've been, you know, I said earlier, I, I do think you just kind of drop Dazzling Gleam at this point. Um, if you're going to click a Fairy move, just click the uh, the Moon Blast. Um, and then, of course, we see here another Ogre Pawn Fire. Uh, and this time, once again, not having the Follow Me, which I do think is very good. Stomping Tangent is incredibly good right now. Uh, and this Pokemon so offensive that I do think you can get away um, with obviously just going on the offense, right? Rather than saying like, oh, yeah, I'm just going to sit here with this like, really offensive squishy Pokemon and just like click Follow Me. You say like, nah, stuff it. I'm the one dealing the damage. You know, let the Flutter Main, the Incin, the, you know, the, the, the Amoongus here. Let them be the supports. I'm going to be the big damage dealer. Uh, then we have Diego here with a Okie Doki. Now, Okie Doki is a Pokemon that is incredibly good into the other uh, Japanese balance, right? Obviously, you've got the upper hand, you know, to help out into those fake out mirrors. Um, you're a Pokemon that, you know, is very naturally bulky and has access to uh, Drain Punch, which makes you pretty damn good into opposing Incineroars. Um, especially too, because they have to go for the water move and you do have the Terra of Water here because um, they really don't want to close combat a, uh, a Poison type. Uh, and of course, Assault Vest plus, you know, things like Drain Punch and Gunk Shot makes you very, very strong into the Raging Bolt. And of course, you can kind of pin it with Upper Hand and allow some of your other Pokemon uh, to really, you know, just trap it, right? And just um, deal a lot of damage to it. But then we see what is a, I don't want to say a standard Chen Pao 4 here, but you've got Chen Pao um, running one of the, the standard sets here, the Focus Sash Terra Stellar with just three offensive attacks, uh, paired with some pretty strong physical attackers. Now, obviously the Ogre Pond Wellspring, one of the best supports in the game. Um, just a very, very good support that can deal quite a lot of damage. And we see, once again, the Landorus Incarnate, this time opting for the Terra Steel. Um, Terra Steel is an adaptation we saw a lot at this event, and I do think it is pretty good. Um, it is just a bit better than Terra Poison in terms of how many resistances it does have. Uh, of course, as well, Rillaboom here, we see opting for the Miracle Seed over the Assault Vest. Um, Miracle Seed Rillaboom is just really, really good when paired with Qian Pao. A lot of the time, they run a lot of attack, and they kind of just, you know, use that paired up with their Grassy Glide to really just deal a lot of damage. And then finally, we see Chien, uh, sorry, Chien Pao. We see the um, the Choice Banded Hisuian Arcanine. Uh, an incredibly good partner with Chien Pao. Obviously, you know, it gives you that extreme speed similar to what D-Knight does. But of course, it also has Intimidate. Um, and it's just a rock type. And, you know, right now, rock types incredibly, are just incredibly good offensively. You can sit there and just spam out the rock slides. Um, obviously, it's a good pivot as well with having Intimidate. Um, I, you know, personally ran Rillaboom plus Hisuian Arcanine at Brisbane last year. Um, and I think it's just a very good defensive core, especially too, because, you know, they're too... Defensive Pokemon in a sense where they're like utility support pieces, you know, with Intimidate and Fake Out. Uh, but of course, you know, in this case, Miracle Seed plus Grassy Glide and Wood Hammer and Choice Banded Flare Blitz, you know, Extreme Speed, Rock Slide, Head Smash, whatever you want. Uh, it does do quite a bit of damage. So then we'll take a look here at David's team. Now, David's team is a very interesting team because this is an archetype we have seen picking up quite a bit with a, you know, a bit of a small adaptation. Now, these are the cores that I kind of refer to as the Ting Dozo stuff. So a lot of the time you'll play against these guys on Ladder and then it's going to lead their Ting Lu plus Don Dozo. And they're going to just click Sand Tomb on you. And they're going to click Yawn on you. They're going to trap you in. They're going to Yawn you. And then it's going to double protect. And one of your Pokemon is just trapped there sleeping for the next like two to three turns. It's very, very obnoxious. Um, but it also pairs incredibly well with Gouging Fire. As again, again, you look at this team. Uh, you know, four of the allied Pokemon here really enjoy Howl. Everything but the Golden Go, really. Um, and yeah, it's just an incredibly um, strong combo. Obviously, you know, you're going boost to speed. You're going max speed so you can outspeed a lot of things. You've got the Breaking Swipe there as well. So, you know, you've got the Breaking Swipe to reduce physical damage. Single has got the Vessel of Ruin to reduce special damage. It's very, very good. Uh, and not to mention, you know, even just like buffing up some of these Pokemon, right? like I I've seen like plus one Dondozos just pick up KOs you wouldn't expect it to get. Um, so yeah, because of that, it's like a very, very strong core. Of course, you got the Power Knight here with the Golden Joe. Um, this is the Golden Joe we've been seeing a lot, a lot right? This is the Terra Fairy Dazzling Gleam Set Trick. Uh, very, very strong. Chen Power, again, this is like the pretty stock standard one, right? Crash, Sucker, Sacred Sword, Terra Stellar. It's good. But the D-Knight is the really interesting one on this team. And I think it's incredibly good. Uh, one, right now, it does feel like there isn't, like, there are a lot of good steel types, but it really feels like it's hard to come by a consistently good steel type that isn't really named Golden Joe, right? Like, obviously, you've got some other guys there, like Gambit and whatnot, but I do think this set here on the D-Knight is incredibly good, right? So, obviously, this pairs really well with the Chen Pao getting it up the house, so the Chen Pao, the Gouging Fire getting up the house, but also we have the Loaded Dice to, um you know, help you buff up that speed stat, which I do think is very, very good. Not to mention, because they have the Loaded Dice as well with Scale Shot, you know, you're doing like at least a base 100, um, you know, 100 physical damage. Could be 125 if you hit all your hits. And then, of course, once you get that plus one speed, you've got the Terra Steel Iron Head, which is really good. E-Speed is still incredibly good, especially if you ever do get that plus one off the Gouging Fire. 
And of course, D Knight next to Chien Pao, just one of the best combos in the game. It's incredibly good. Um, and if you can position it correctly, it will just run through games. And it's also very good at cleaning up. Uh, and then finally, to round up the top eight here, we have Aurelian's team. Now, again, this is just like it, it's almost just your standard Japanese balance. Um, obviously, no Incineroar on this team. They did just opt for the solo Hearth Flame. Uh, but it's, you know, it's it's the, you know, you've got the Rillaboom here, you've got the uh, the Raging Bolt. Obviously, on this team, it's Assault Vest plus Terror Electric. Um, was pretty interesting to see that, if I'm being honest. Like, I, I am kind of shocked it wasn't Calm Mind. But I guess the Raging Bolt is just, you know, it's a good Pokemon, right? Into the Mirror against, you know, opposing Raging Bolts, right? You go Terra Electric, you fire off some big electric damage. You've got Snarl as well. Uh, and, of course, Dragon Pulse is nice if they do, uh, you know, if they don't use their Terra on their their um their Raging Bolt. But, of course, Ogreborn Hearth Flame, in this case, does have the Follow Me, but still an incredibly offensive Pokemon. Uh, everyone knows Ch uh, Oshifu Single Strike here paired up with a Speed Boost to Flutterman is one of the best combos in the game. Um, you can really run through a lot of end games with these two because if you add speed everything, great. You've got, you know, Terra Fairy Moonblast or you've got Terra Dark, you know, Wicked Blows. Um, and if your opponent does have, you know, some Pokemon faster than Yoroshi, of course, you just go the Icy Wind uh, plus the Wicked Blow and you kind of just start pinning things down in the late game, which is very, very good. Uh, we do see another Miracle Seed Rillaboom, which is kind of crazy how many of them we've seen so far in the top eight. Um, I think that's like Honestly, the third or fourth one, which is kind of wild. Normally, you see the Assault Vest. I actually, we did see like one or two Assault Vests. So maybe it's only like the third Miracle Seed, but still incredibly cool to see. Uh, and then, of course, we see Landorus and Kana in the last slot here. Opting for Taunt over Sludge Bomb, which honestly, I do think is very good. I feel like a lot of teams right now should be running Taunt. Um, and it is just one of the better Taunt Pokemon, just because it feels like it's on every team. So you may as well just click it on this Pokemon. So I kind of want to just like speed run the top 16 here um, before we just move on to a couple of other teams throughout the top, you know, 64. Or, you know, throughout, throughout day two, I should say. Um, but we have this team here um, by Divide, I believe. Divide, I, I apologize I'm butchering your name here. Um, pretty standard Oshi Scarf here. Very, very good. Lernus Incarnate, of course. Very, very solid. Uh, Ogreborn Hurflim here, opting for the Swords Dance plus the Grassy Glide, which is very, very good with the Rillaboom. Uh, of course, we see another Terrifier Assault Vest Rillaboom here. Very, very stock standard. Uh, and then, of course, just really Japanese balance to kind of round this out. Right, You've got the Raging Bolt here with the Lefty's Calm Mind. And the Incineroar here, again, opting to go for the Will-O-Wisp here over the Flare Blitz. Uh, so, yeah, very, very solid, right? Then we have Alberto's team here. Uh, Alberto here running the Pelipper. Very, very cool to see Pelipper get such a, you know, such a high result. Um, Archaladon is a Pokemon right now that I think definitely did not see enough play um, in the current metagame. I think Archaladon is actually one of the better answers into things like, um, uh, what's it called? Into the, these Japanese balance teams. Uh, especially here with like Terra Bug as well. Because Terra Bug gives you that option to um, obviously resist the fighting type moves coming into you. Uh, and of course as well, you've got things like, you know, Urshifu Rapid Strike here. Um, obviously the Pelipper, which is very, very good. Incineroar, very, very strong in rain. Amoongus, Landorus Incarnate here. Um, Lander Eye here, obviously opting for the Sandsteer Storm as well, which I do think is very, very solid. Then who do we have next? We have... Oh, wait, did we just look at Roberto's team? Yeah, sorry, wait. Back to back, Alberto, Roberto. God damn it, they're both running rain. <laughs> That's kind of crazy. Uh, but we see another Pelipper team here. Um, again, like things like Amoongus, Archaladon, Urchi Rapid, all incredibly good on rain. Uh, Chen Pao with Life Orb is actually like super interesting. Terra Grass, Terra Blast. I actually really like that. Um... Yeah, that's actually, like, really, really cool. And then we just see Cresselia here. Um, Cress with Goggles, honestly, not bad. Gives you, like, a Trick Room mode as well into some of the more hyper-offensive teams. Uh, that is one thing I really like about Archaladon as well. It has a really nice speed tier where you can play it in Trick Room with things like Cresselia, but you can also play it in Tailwind with things like Pelipper. Uh, and, of course, even up against some of the other balanced matchups, right? You can just play it as it is without having to worry about speed control, which is very, very nice. But, again, just a pretty standard rain team. I shouldn't say standard rain team, dude. This here is kind of wild on the Chien Pao and... Seeing Cress on Rain 2 is kind of wild, but the other four Pokemon, I guess, are like relatively standard on these teams. Uh, then we have Joseph Russell. This was actually a really cool team as well, because this is a, it looks like a very similar archetype to something I tested a lot early in Regulation F, um, but they kind of slapped Psy Spam on it. So I don't know if you guys saw, there was a very similar team with these four Pokemon that had, um, I believe it was Golden Go, and I think like the original team had, uh, what was it, Screamtail, and they eventually moved on from it. I forget exactly what they replaced it with. Um, but yeah, like really, really cool here to see Iron Crown actually get some high usage, uh, especially too, because into, you know, Regulation G, just drop Iron Crown, slap on a Calyrax Shadow Rider, boys, and you got yourself a good core. Uh, but yeah, look, Ogrepan Her Flame, uh, you know, we've got the Urshi Rapid Strike here, you know, Reggie Drago. Reggie Drago is like another incredibly, like, slept on Pokemon right now, especially when you pair it with Redirection Plus on um, Priority Block and Indeedee. Because if you ever get this mod in the right situation where it's like, oh, I'm playing up against a Tailwind team, you know, you get up your Trick Room and then eventually you get Drago in on full HP, you run through it. Um, and again, you play against a slower team and like Tornadus plus Drago just kind of runs through, right? You get up the Tailwind and then you start one-shotting everything with Dragon Energy, which is kind of wild. 
Um, then we have Wolf Glick's team. Now, Wolfie Glick, the guy, um, a really cool team here by Wolf. I've, I've been testing something very similar to this. Uh, but of course, you know, I have Chi Yu in the, uh, the instant slot. So yeah, stuff your Wolf. Um, but yeah, look, a really, really cool team here. Um, I think this has a lot of really good Pokemon into the current metagame. Um, Terra Water Choice Scarf Urshifu, I think, is incredibly good. I do know a lot of people have been opting for, you know, some of those other, like, other Terras, like Terra Steel, Terra Fire, Terra Grass. Helps you out a lot with things like Raging Bolt. But I do think the damage you get out of Terra Water is fantastic, especially when paired up with, you know, Thunderous, uh, sorry, Tornadus, of course. Um, I think people just forget sometimes. Torn Urshi is still one of the best cores in the game, guys. Like, don't sleep on it. It's still really good. And you can, like, especially early in events, you can, like, really skill dip some, like, lower level players by just, like, leading those two together and just going, like, Terra Water, um, Surging Strike next to a, um, a Rain Dance. It's, like, yeah, it's pretty good. Um, very, very good defensive backbone as well on this team with Insin plus Amoongus. Um, it's just fantastic, right? You've got these, like, two really, really good Pokemon. Very consistent. Uh, Terra Grass, Insin in the rain is obviously really good. Terra Water, Amoongus also is just very, very good. Um, yeah, very, very nice backbone there. Then Wolfie here was, I believe he was running this speed, uh, the special attack booster on this set, which I do think is very good. You know, I said earlier in the video that, um, obviously, I think speed booster right now, it's like, it's good. On the right it, on the right team where you need that second form of speed control, it is really, really good. But it really feels like these Flutter Mains don't do any damage, especially with their Dazzling Gleams. And I feel like that's why you're seeing a lot of people opt to drop the Dazzling Gleam. But like Wolf's like, nah, I'm Special Attack Booster. He's probably in Modest Nature with Terra Fairy. He's like, my Dazzling Gleams are going to freaking slap. Uh, and then of course, Lenorus Incarnate. Um, was kind of wild to see Wolf not opt for the Sandseer Storm, um, considering it is like a pretty heavily built team around Rain. Uh, but I guess the consistency of, like, Lini Tornadoes plus Lander is, is not as good as something like Tornadoes plus Pelipper. Um, because obviously with Pelipper, you just automatically get the rain where Tornadoes might, you know, set up Tailwind, but then it wants to click Bleakwind Storms, and then you kind of have this move sitting there that you kind of wish was sub. Um, at least that's kind of my idea behind it. But yeah, really, really cool team by Wolf here. I, I really like that. I think it's one of the better teams. Um, I guess this is actually another, like, great time to mention. I don't know who, it, like, Game Freak or, you know, the Pokemon company, I should say, needs to hear this, but it is ridiculous, right? that on the day three of an international, we just play the finals. When you have guys like Wolf Glick, who just went 12-3 and didn't top cut, because coming out of the Swiss rounds, he is not allowed to play top eight. Like, to me, top 16 or at least X3 should guarantee cut, right? There should have just been one more fucking round. Like, I, I hate this whole idea of championship Sunday. To me, it's ridiculous. Give me like top 16 Sunday or something. Let's like, let's have like a bigger Swiss round on the Saturday and then we'll play like top eight, top, play top 16 on the Sunday, but even play top 32, man. Like some of these guys here going like 11 and four, like dude, that's a really good freaking run, man. That's two losses day one, two losses day two, man. It's like, give them a chance to have like one more loss, man. Um, yeah, it's kind of my rant there. Like I do apologize, but like it's, to me, it's ridiculous that these players here, like these guys here in particular, uh, not Sam, but the other guys, 12 and three is an incredible run at such a big event. And they're just like, oh yeah, like you guys went 12-3. Yeah, unfortunately you guys don't make it, but like th these guys do. Like these three, you know, these three 12-3s um, make it, but yeah, the rest here, yeah, sorry, you don't make it. Ridiculous, man, ridiculous. Um, but then we have Brian Collins here. Um, really, really cool team. You got the Hatterene here, you know, a bit of size spam. Choice Bandit, Dark, Shifu, man, really, really good, obviously with the DD. A little bit of Sun Room with the, the Torko, Choice Specs, you know, Terrify, Eruption, obviously very, very good. Uh, and this one here, I also think is kind of wild. The, uh, the Focus Sash, Technician, Smeagol. Um, I'm guessing Technician is just for consistency over Moody, um, and maybe just that little bit of damage you get out of Fake Out, but obviously Follow Me, Spore, Fake Out, very, very solid, and then Decorate. If you can get a Decorate onto any of these mods, it doesn't matter which one it is, whether that be the Giraffe, the Torkoal, you know, the Urshi, or the Hat, that's super good, man. Like, it's incredibly good. Like, a plus one or plus two, whatever Torkoal it is, like, with Terrify Eruption in the Sun, man, you're gonna sweep shit, dude. That's like, that's really, really good. Um, and one cool thing here as well is the Weather Ball. I really like this because if your opponent like flips the weather on you, say like a tornado goes for like manual rain, and then you just hit him with the specs like um like water uh what's it called uh Weather Ball in the rain. Uh, I think that's like really really cool, man. Really nice tech there. Uh, two more teams here. Uh, this one here by Casper. This is another really really sick team. I've got no idea how the hell he landed on this team. But this is awesome, right? Obviously, you've got the side spam here. We see the NDD plus the Hatterene, right? Life Orb, Terra Psychic, Expanding Force deals a lot of damage, yeah? We have this Rain Core here as well, which I think was, like, really cool because it gave the team a mode outside of um out of, outside of Trick Room. Pelipper, Archaladon, Urshifu, Rapid Strike. Um, Again, the Pelipper, because he's uh, Focus Sash, I'm assuming that's just Max Max. Urshi, again, this is a Terra Steel, which was, again, interesting. But obviously, you've got the Manual Rain coming out of the Pelipper. Really, really cool. And then, of course, Archaladon, as I said earlier, a perfect, you know, middle ground Pokemon. It's got a bit of speed to complain both tail, uh, Tailwind and Trick Room. But the, really, the source of this team is this right here, boys. 
as I'm sure anyone who has watched the channel for, you know, the last few months knows, she used my favorite Pokemon in the game. I love this Pokemon. I think it's incredibly good. I love it. I run it with choice specs almost always. I've tested things like Nasty Plot with Berry and Goggles, you know, all that shit. I've tried specs. I've Sorry, I've tried Life Orb. I've tried Scarf. I've tried it all, man. I think specs is just objectively the best set. And then I see this here. I see Iron Ball Chi Yu. And again, by the way, this is one of those teams that went like, what, 12 and 3. Give this man a place in the top 16. I'm sorry, man. Casper should have got to play. Iron Ball Chi Yu with Dark Pulse, Heat Wave, Snarl, and um, Nasty Plot. Obviously incredibly good, by the way, for helping buff up your hat. Because again, you lead the Indeedee, you lead the hat, right? You know, you go follow me, Trick Room, whatever, and then you follow me until your Indeedee dies. And then you're just going to Chen Pao next to your Indeedee to close out the game, right? So you Chi Yu, no, no, Chen Pao. And another really cool thing as well is he actually opted for um, Calm Mind on this team and not going like Protect at all, which is like, I think really, really cool as well. Uh, but yeah, I actually, like, the other thing I really love about Chi, like, Chi on this team is one of the best ways to beat Psy Spam is just Rillaboom. You're like, oh, you've got up your terrain, joke's on you, I now have, I'm like, I'm here, and I've got the, um, you know, I've, I've got the Grassy terrain, right? And then Chi is like, oh no, I'm like Terra ghosting you, and I'm clicking Heat Wave, and it's like, you know, yeah, you, you can, you know, you can click Fake Out on me, or, you know, Fake Out my ally, I'm just gonna kill you. Or you could just go for your Terra Fire, and now you're eating, you know, an Expanding Force as I, like, switch back into my Ndidi. Um, I, I, it's such like such a good tech man i really like this and it's kind of crazy to see my guy chi um getting like such a high placement here but again i'm not surprised um simply because i i think chi on these teams is good chi is a pokemon that wants to run a lot of bulk and doesn't want to run much speed so because of the iron ball you can just run it in trick room and yeah like really really cool tech this is one of my favorite teams by casper man uh awesome team awesome team and then finally to round it out here we have sam uh the top placing 11 and 4 in the event um another really really interesting team we see a bit of heatran here which is a pokemon we haven't seen too much uh, Scarf Gapdos here, one of the, um, the, it probably is, I think it is the fastest choice Scarf we have in the format right now, uh, but also really, really good. I do like to Terra Ghost to help you out into, like, the Incineroars, because it means they just can't fake you out as you get up the Defiant, very, very nice. Uh, boost the Bundle, obviously, you know, the Premier Speed Control, that isn't a priority Tailwind Bond, very, very good. Clear Amulet, Bax Calibur, another very, very saucy Mon, it's a Pokemon I've spoken about quite a bit, um, in the recent weeks. Um, I think this one has a very, very positive matchup into things like Raging Bolt, especially too, because you can, you know, if they don't Terra, your Glaivers rush them. If they do Terra, you just Icicle crash them. If they want to try, you know, play funny buggers with the um the Thunderclaps, of course, you got the Ice Shard as well. Uh, and then Ogre Pawn, um here with like giving you a second Defiant Mon's pretty cool. Uh, and then a pretty standard um, Lander is here with the Taunt, Terra Steel. Um, I will say though, Double Defiant, absolutely cooking, right? You got Clear Amulet here on the, the Max Caliber, and then you got Double Defiant. Like, this is a team where, like, you don't want to bring Incineroar into this team, man. It's like, oh, you've got the fire move? Bro, I just switched in my Heatran. It's like, oh, like, you've got the, you know, Intimidate? Like, bro, I got three Pokemon that don't care about your Intimidate. And then it's like, that's all the physical attackers. Like, all three physical attackers don't care about Intimidate on this team. And then it's like, oh, I've also, also got, like, the Landorus who can, like, kind of mess you up. And it's like, oh, do you really want to click Fake Out in front of an Iron Bundle? Like, maybe not. Like, and th this team is, like, so anti Incin, it's kind of wild. Now, guys, that is it for the top 16, but I do want to just give a shout out to some of my fellow Australian players. Uh, first up, we have my guy, Nick Khan. Um, Nick Khan, one of the best players in the world. I've spoken to him, you know, a bunch of times. So very, very nice guy. Um, still very, very young. Uh, he's a player that I think definitely at some point in the near future will take home Worlds in the Masters division. Um, he is a, a world champion, I believe. Um, I forget if it was, I think it was juniors, could have been seniors. Uh, one of the few years back, but definitely an incredibly talented player. Um, very, very good. Just running Japanese balance here. Um, so, yeah, really cool to see, you know, Nick go out to EUIC and do so well. Um, we had, I think, three other Australian players. Let's see if I can remember here. Uh, Diego here, I believe he's a player from Chile, but he does play out of Australia. Um, running his side spam team here. Um, very, very good. He ran side spam at the Melbourne Regional Championships, championships as well. Um, cooking here too, man. Uh, we got the, uh, what's this? The the charcoal, but solar beam and clear smog on the Torkoal. Very, very interesting. Opting for the weather ball as well, which I do like. Uh, but yeah, really cool team here. Obviously, seeing Gallade plus side spam getting some results is very, very nice. Um, Psychic Seed and DD is actually kind of pog. I'm not gonna lie, that's really interesting. Skill swap on the dude. This is actually like some sauce, man. I didn't realize how good this was. Yorna Saluna, you've got um Psychic Seed Armor Rouge, like Taunt Galet. That's really interesting. I wonder if it's there to like at speed some like imprisoned ones or something. Like, I don't know. Maybe to catch like it honestly, it's probably to catch people who lead Amoongus into you, right? Because a lot of the time, like you go into like Amoongus and Didi and you just like tear water or something, and then you just like spore. And it's like, you have to give me one of them. Uh, where I guess the Taunt Gallade like, just allows you to like taunt one, which is like really, really sick. Um, Rocky Helmet and DD here with Skill Swap is like really interesting. No attacking move as well. Very pog. Um, Intimidate Landorus with Safety Goggles, Terra Fairies. Oh, dude, this is... Oh my God, I heard about this. 
Imprison Earth Power Sludge Bomb. This is just special attacking Landorus T, man. <laughs> That's really interesting. Just like hard box down opposing Landorus. That's very, very funny. Of course, the Talker, which we spoke about. Uh, very, very cool. Um, Megan Rattle, another uh, person I play a lot at the, the Melbourne um, locals. Uh, bringing out here the Gouging Fire plus Ting Lu stuff. Um, we spoke about a team very, very similar to it earlier. But still just a very, very strong six um, here. Obviously, you know, you've got the Gouging Fire here paired up with Unit 4. Pretty good physical attackers. Uh, obviously, on this team, Ting Lu doesn't run the physical attack, so... But yeah, still a really, really cool set. And shout out to Megan there. Uh, but yeah, guys, that's basically going to be it. Um, obviously, like, we could sit here and talk all day. We got Judy Azzarelli here in the top six, Runner Pelipper, which is, like, very, very pog, right? Gabba Bugatti here, obviously getting top 64 as well is very, very cool. Um, just a lot of, like, really, really talented players, right? Um, let's see. Do I know any know anyone else here? Like, I'm sure I do. I'm sure we could find someone. I know, like, Stefan Mott was in here as well. I think he was, like, further up, though. James Beck, I just saw you there, 11-4, very, very pog. Uh, yeah. Dude, like, oh, there was Stefan there. Stefan Mott. Very, another very, very talented player here. Running Clefairy. Uh, Clefairy was the one I actually spoke about, like, two weeks ago that I was saying it was, like, very underrated. Um, and we actually did get to see some Clefairies on stream, which was, like, really, really cool. It, it actually had a decent showing, which is very, very nice. Uh, but, yeah. Anyway, guys, that's going to be it for this one. Uh, let me know what you think of the European International Championships. Um, obviously, one of the last major events we have here in Regulation F before finally moving over to Regulation G. Uh, but, yeah, guys, if you liked the video, obviously, you know, hit that like button, you know, consider subscribing and leave a comment down below. And, yeah, let me know what you think of the European International Championships. Uh, but, yeah, anyway, guys, that'll be it for this one. I'll, uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.